and Deputy Minister Liu Jing of the Ministry of Public Security. The facade they put up of punishing human rights abusers is rather like a thief shouting, Catch that thief! To this day, to protect the gains of special interest groups, the CCP has, on one hand, eliminated their previous facade and completely abandoned the workers, peasants, and the populace. On the other hand, they have advanced their deceitful and villainous means as more and more of the CCP's human rights abuses are exposed to the international community. The CCP has used popular vocabulary such as the rule of law, the free market, for the people, and reform to confuse people. Their primary means of deceiving people include the following. 1. Making laws and regulations in violation of the Chinese Constitution. Laws and regulations in violation of the Constitution are passed on to law enforcement personnel at various levels to provide a legal basis to be used to obstruct the people from their efforts to stop persecution, to gain freedom, and to uphold human rights. 2. Non-political problems are handled with political means. A simple social problem might be treated very seriously, as if someone was trying to take the people away from the party, or bring down the entire party in the country, create turmoil, they might even be labeled as enemy forces. The party would then use propaganda to incite the public to hate anyone with an opinion differing from that of the party. 3. Political issues are managed with underhanded means. The CCP's latest ploy for attacking pro-democracy citizens and independent thinking intellectuals is to set up traps in order to imprison them. Such traps include false accusations of civil offenses such as prostitution and tax evasion, the attackers keep a low profile to avoid condemnation by outside groups. These alleged crimes, which are often enough to ruin the reputations of the accused, are also used to humiliate the victims in public. 4. Making use of forming a so-called united front to dress up the CCP. The CCP knows that its words have no credibility. Thus, one of the CCP's three strategies United Front has become ever more so its productive armor in days of peace. It extensively trains, supports, and bribes a large number of famous people, overseas media sources, especially Chinese media, as well as Western politicians and businessmen, and scholars. The CCP has them all wave the flag and shout in support of the CCP's basic policies, and carry out the deceptive strategy of, quote, Minor criticism offers great help." Unquote. All of this is done, in fact, in order to help the CCP maintain its control. Many people know and dislike the CCP's Machiavellian behavior and loathe its struggles and deceptions, but at the same time they fear the CCP's political movements and the resulting turmoil, and fear chaos will visit China again. Thus, once the CCP threatens people with turmoil, people fall into silent acceptance of the CCP rule and feel helpless in the face of the CCP's despotic power. In reality, who is the biggest source of instability? It is the CCP that specializes in tyranny. The CCP, with its several million troops and armed police, is the real source of turmoil. Ordinary citizens have neither the cause nor the capability to initiate turmoil. Only the regressive CCP would be so reckless as to bring the country into turmoil at any hint of change. The CCP policies of stability overrides everything else, and nipping the buds of all unstable elements, these slogans have become the theoretical basis for the CCP to suppress people. 
the CCP instigates turmoil and then, in turn, uses the chaos it created to coerce the people. This is a common action of all villains. In the issue of the Tiananmen Square Massacre, facing those that were killed in the massacre, the CCP and its cohorts did not reflect on whether they were guilty of killing. Instead, they rhetorically asked society and let the people choose which one is better, suppression of the students or internal disorder that may lead to civil war. What does this act show? It can only illustrate the shamelessness of the villainous nature of the CCP. The CCP is in control of the entire state machine and all means of propaganda. In other words, the 1.3 billion Chinese people are held hostage by the CCP. With the 1.3 billion hostages in hand, the CCP can always argue its hostage theory, that if it does not suppress a certain group of people, the whole nation can end up in turmoil or disaster. Using this as an excuse, the CCP could suppress any individual or group at will, and its suppression could always be so-called justified. Many Chinese people feel that they now enjoy more freedom than before, so they hold out hope for the prospect of the CCP's improvement. As a matter of fact, the degree of freedom bestowed upon people depends on the CCP's sense of crisis. The CCP would do anything to maintain the collective interests of the party, including giving so-called democracy, freedom, or human rights to the people. However, under the CCP leadership, the so-called freedom bestowed by the CCP is not protected by any legislation. Such freedom is purely a tool to deceive and control people amidst the international trend toward democracy. In essence, this freedom is an irreconcilable conflict with the CCP dictatorship. Once such a conflict is beyond the CCP's tolerance level, it could take back all the freedom instantaneously. In the history of the CCP, there were several periods during which speech was relatively free, with each one followed by a period of strict control. Such cyclical patterns occur throughout the history of the CCP, further demonstrating the CCP's iniquitous nature. So, we should not mistakenly think that the CCP has changed by itself, even if we see some signs of its improving human rights. In history, when the CCP struggled to overthrow the KMT government, it pretended to be fighting for democracy for the nation. The CCP's villainous nature is such that any promise it makes cannot be trusted. Liberate Taiwan and Unify Taiwan have been the CCP's propaganda slogans over the past few decades. By means of this propaganda, the CCP has acted like a nationalist and a patriot. Does the CCP truly care about the integrity of the nation's territory? In the early days, when the CCP set up the Chinese Soviet during the KMT reign, Article 14 of its constitution stated that any ethnic groups or any provinces inside China can claim independence. In today's words, they allowed one country, two systems, or two Chinas, with one inside the other. In 1945, the Soviet Red Army entered northeast China and committed